Okay, this is Hunting for Purple Streetlights in Kansas City, video 263. I'm going to take a route uh, in a different direction than I took last time. And uh, from, like at the beginning of video 262. Uh, initially, this is really the same route right now, but um, I just turned on to Caw Drive or Caw Road, something like that. Because I really don't have a lot of gas money, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that I'm over here already. And I'm going to film some purple street lights that I have not yet filmed that I saw on my commute from this point before. But my windows were like fogged up and stuff like that so it wasn't a very convenient time to film so there we go now we're gonna get it I've actually already put these on a map um, and stuff I think it's interesting that there are so many purple street lights near the river and near this area like the you know the industrial area probably drains pretty well chemically like if there were it was like a chemical spill um, there are a lot of purple street lights in this area in Kansas City. It doesn't look like drainage is usually a, that much of a problem in areas that are not even immediately by the river, like the, the Missouri River. Okay, so I'm getting on to, I want to say, I think 670 is what this is. Or maybe it's still 70 right now, I guess. I think it's actually possibly just 70. get on to 670 here eventually. So we got the really tall interstate lights here right now. This is in Kansas City. Hopefully you can see the signs there. I had a problem with my dash mount so I don't know how convenient that is right now. Um, I really didn't really play uh, video 670. I'm sorry, video 262. Let's see if it was actually good then. I might have even moved the mount since then. Um, okay, here we go. Three quarters of a mile, bring down to 670. I have to constantly put coolant in my car right now, basically. That, that's why it overheated before, and um, things are really financially tight right now until I get my first paycheck where I work right now, so. Okay, here we go, exit 421B. Here we get off on this. Uh, maybe sometime I'll take exit 70, or I'm just, just continue on to um, 70 East. But shortly after this point, eventually here it'll go over to the right a little bit. Uh, it'll start to bend to the right, and then we'll, there'll be a point where there are like, uh, I want to say six purple street lights there. Actually, maybe seven total. doing these to collect location information about the purple street lights. I think that's something that people need to pay attention to. I think it takes a lot of data collection though sometimes to see it and it's really easy just to think that the purple street lights are set up as checkpoints on the interstate if you don't pay if you don't care about it that much. But if you really do care about it and you just keep looking down every road, you'll realize that at least I what I see uh, is concerning. They, they told us that they're a factory defect. If you look at Olathe, Kansas, and some of the places in Florida, you should be kind of concerned, especially in Olathe, Kansas, where the topography is not just even there. Like, there are topographic troughs that correspond to creeks and stuff like that, and they set up those purple street lights, I think, with a bias towards those. I don't know how to quantify it mathematically, but I've already 
uploaded a video to YouTube of me looking at the topographic, of me showing you the topographic map. Well, I should say of the topographic map while I was explaining to you. Um, YouTube's default thumbnail was just to show you another map like it does on a lot of other videos, so it wouldn't have stood out much unless you looked at the title of it. So I actually did a custom thumbnail on that. I wonder if I wrote custom thumbnail in the notes. I might actually have to make sure I did that. So anyway, hopefully you can see these purple street lights. Sorry, guys. Uh, these are the, almost the last two. Uh, and then we have another one at an exit over here. I don't know if you guys, uh, maybe you guys didn't get to see that. I might have to redo this video now because of the way it's not mounted. It's like pointing to the left. Okay, and then this is the other one. So I mean, you can you can see, guys. It's kind of weird, guys, that they they preferentially pick these kinds of areas. Okay, and to most people, that's why they wouldn't care. They would just think that they want to use it because if it turns purple, you know, that's marking that spot for people, right? It would look like that, and they can say it's a factory defect. The whole the whole narrative crumbles. It's a red herring, guys. They say that the. They're just a factor defect and they're on purpose. Well, it's not true that they're not on purpose anymore. And I, I don't think that was any different before. But I, I didn't look at them on the map like immediately when they started in whatever cities they started in. But I did see some of them, some streetlights at least that were purple. Um, I don't know if they were LED or not. Um, in uh, Arizona, back in like 2017. Other people remark. Other people remarked at it too. Like they mentioned them, the purple street lights. That's why uh, I paid attention to them over there. And then I just never thought about it because for years. And then now it's become a lot more of a thing. So okay, two M. So the commute after this is pretty. Um. Oh, you know what? There are some cones and stuff like that over there. I don't know how well I got those. Anyway, besides this, it's probably not worth running this. Because um, this is just going to be redundant with a lot of what I've filmed already. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video.